Welcome, gratitude seekers, to our wonderful episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Here today, we have Miki Dedier, a life coach for dads. He is talking with us all the way from Sweden, and I'm sure he has a lot of interesting st stories to tell you and a lot of life experience that we can all learn from. Miki, do you want to say something about yourself? Uh, hi, thank you uh, for for uh, sending out the invitation to join you to talk about gratitude. It's something that's really dear to my heart and really important to my family life. And um, in my work, I, I work with dads because I want to support fathers in, uh, you know, reframing strength as vulnerability, right? So that we continuously open up instead of shut down and we learn to be present available and engaged with our children and gratitude is central to that so i'm excited to be be talking to you georgian wow this, this is awesome uh, i i i truly believe in your work and in the importance of your work because i know that some of my my own challenges in life have been um uh related to to the relationship that i have with my with that i have had with my father and um i know that it's really important for for kids to have a great relationship with their father and that's going to last for a lifetime in their hearts and in their minds and i really think that your work is is amazing mm, thank you yeah so um the first thing that i wanted to to ask you is If you have uh, a favorite quote on gratitude, what is it and uh, why do you choose that one? You know, I might, I might not have a quote that pops up, but I, I do have a, um, a way I was taught to think about gratitude that um, is like a quote, but it's, it's, it's a phrase that comes from the Haudenosaunee people of North America. Um, where gratitude was our central core prayer in ceremonies, morning rituals, in uh, opening their ceremonies and closing their ceremonies. Um, and what they say is that gratitude, their Thanksgiving address, as they call it, uh, they say that's the words before all else. Wow. So before they do anything of import, any decisions, um, before they start the day, They speak words of gratitude. So it's the words before all else. Wow. That, that's really deep. <laughs> really, really interesting. I, I, I didn't know about this. And, and I also um, do this. And I've uh, started doing this every morning to start uh, thinking about things that I'm grateful for. Uh, immediately as I wake up bef because uh, when you wake up in the morning it's like you tend to think about all the things that you need to do and it's great to to shift that focus and uh, to focus first on uh, the things that you are grateful for and having a good state for the day that is going to come yeah yeah that's central it's easy to forget otherwise you know mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. all the relationships that feed into our lives yeah And not just, not just with people, right? Not just with friends or family, with colleagues, but also nature, you know, all mm -hmm. sentient beings, everything that's part of this life that we are in, right? So exactly. we're, we're, kind of caught, we're kind of caught in that web. We're part of this web. Mm -hmm. To start mm -hmm. every morning, you know, when, when we're fresh from dreaming, to acknowledge and appreciate and, uh, and also reconnect with that web through gratitude, through the words before all else, before mm -hmm. the do list even. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, we in lives have moments and periods when it's not really easy to be grateful. What do you do when it's hard to be grateful, Miki? Uh, well, I've, I've been practicing gratitude every day for 12 years. 
So I've had a lot of times, a lot of times when it's hard to be grateful. Yeah. But it's become, because I have the habit of gratitude, it becomes an indicator. You know, I can feel, am I in touch with my gratefulness today? Can I feel that wonderful sense of greeting the world that I do when I'm in a good place? Or do I feel tense and uneasy and, and um, like the words don't have a taste or a flavor, right? Because I speak it out loud when I, when I say it. That's so what I, what I do is I, I just become aware of that. I notice that, wow, I'm having a hard time feeling it today, you know? And that turns me, you know, with compassion towards myself to understand, you know, am I stressed? If I'm stressed, what am I feeling and so forth? And so I, I spend a little time with that and then I try again and I see if it, if the connection is there, you know, so it's, it's a kind of a gentle exploration or tracking, if you will, of what's going on so that I can realign myself and find that gratitude again. And then, 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 uh, uh, so it becomes, a, it becomes a tool of healing and reconnection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And um, I know that you, you told me that um, you have been practicing gratitude uh, for 12 years now. Mm. Um, did that happen? Be um, did a meaningful experience happen before that moment that you decided to, to feel grateful and to work on uh, having a habit of gratitude in your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of things happened. I lost a lot of things that I took for granted. Um, I lost a lot of money. I uh, lost my father and my sister. And uh, I uh, also fell ill and I was ill for a year. So all of that came together within a few years of each other. And uh, I began to reconnect to nature you know, to spend a lot of time in nature that I also did as a kid. And uh, after having fallen ill and I lost my father, my sister, and my savings, I uh, started to find my way back to that. And I found a, a mentor who introduced me to a man who was a Mohawk sub-chief called uh, Jake Swamp. And Jake Swamp, he started something called the Tree of Peace Society. And one of his teachings was gratitude. And uh, so... Um, he believed that if all the children of the world uh, shared in Thanksgiving every day, then all the problems of the world would start to go away. That was his belief. Wow, this is so amazing. Yeah. And so um, with the help of my mentor and also practicing in community and being in community where children and adults of all ages started the day with gratitude and also becoming friends with Native Americans who, who have this in their culture uh, and spending time with them and just learning the, the solace that's offered when we meet in gratitude uh, just it had a huge impact on me for uh, beginning to see what I have in my life that I cannot lose. Yeah. So all the riches I have and the wealth I have and uh, that's all around me every day that I wake up. Uh, and until then, I'd spent life chasing um, what I thought would bring me a sense of peace. But it was much simpler than I thought. And it's hard too, but it was much simpler than I knew. And I'm really grateful for Jake Swamp and the work he did. He's passed on uh, in bringing that to a wider, uh, wider group of people than, than his people. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, do you feel like um, getting to where you are right now, um, that gratitude helped you to be at this place in your life, to, to have um, a successful coaching business, to be a happy father? Um, do you feel like gratitude helped you be, get to be where you are right now? I've never thought about it in that way, but when I think about it now, you know, I can see what it would have been like 12 years without gratitude. It would have been like scorched earth, you know, mm -hmm. everything, um, 
what gratitude has helped me do is really appreciate what comes to me, you know? And, uh, and so, you know, when, when I, when a man connects with me for coaching, I'm extremely grateful for that connection. Uh, so I'm not focusing on the numbers. I'm focusing on the connections I can make. And I really appreciate the opportunity to work in the way I do. And also, you know, I live on a farm. Uh, my boys are healthy. They have a wonderful community around them. I just, just before this call, I kind of cleaned my mouth off. I had a plate of homegrown tomatoes from our neighbor and our own cucumbers with olive oil from Croatia. You know, so um, all of that is, is just a tremendous, uh, tremendous wealth in so many ways. So I even forgot the questions because I got so caught up in gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. all right. It's all right. It's yeah. perfect. It's the most important thing, you know, um, actually feeling it and, thinking about the things that you are grateful and focusing on them. This is the most beautiful things that thing that we can do actually. You know, you know, we were talking before that you're from Romania. My family is from, yeah. from uh, former Yugoslavia and Croatia and my father, he lived to be 94 and he wow. was never interested in money, but he used to sit on a balcony in a house that we have in, in Dubrovnik in Croatia uh, or in an apartment. We have a tiny apartment, one room, and he'd sit on the balcony and he, he'd eat a peach and he'd look at the sea and he'd say, I'm the wealthiest man in the world. Wow. <laughs> and the house is from 17, uh, I can't remember, early 1700s. And it's carved in the lintel of the entryway to the house. I have little, I need little. May God allow me to keep the little I have. You know, so that there's this old kind of lineage of gratitude that's been in your roots, I'm sure, and in my roots. And we lost track maybe a little bit. And there's so many people now reweaving it into our lives. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so um, how was it for you before you were grateful? Um, how was life like, even though you had money, you uh, had other things that should have made you happy? How was it before? You know, uh, a life without gratitude for me is fundamentally an isolated and disconnected life, you know? So I had money, I had lots of money. I traveled the world about 200 days a year to Madagascar yeah. and, you know, everywhere, the Congo, I was everywhere. Um, I lived centrally in Stockholm. Um, I had everything, you know, that is outwardly desirable in mainstream society. Uh, but I was isolated. I didn't have a lot of people, big social life because I was traveling so much. Uh, I'd sit in bars in countries, uh, you know, that I spent three days in and I come back home and I travel to the next thing. So it was, it was often lonely, very stressful, um, disconnected and out of integrity, you know, with some deeper core values about what I truly believed is worthwhile in life. So, um, it was necessary. I had to be there. I had to go through that in order to get to where I am today. Uh, and, and life without gratitude, uh, I wouldn't want to go back. You know? mm -hmm. um, what would you tell your younger self at that point about gratitude? Uh, um, well, if I'd listened, <laughs> I'm not sure I would have listened to anyone telling yeah. me anything. <laughs> Uh, but let's pretend that in one of those bars in, in I don't know, Nairobi, I would have been open enough to listen. Um, oh, gosh, that's a tough question because I can get really <laughs> philosophical on that. But, but basically, I'd say, uh, you know, if, if I had someone, if I'd listened, uh, I'd, I'd tell myself that, look, you're going to lose everything you're fighting for right now because sooner or later you lose everything. Um, so don't forget that you're part of a beautiful cosmic experiment uh, and appreciate it, you know, appreciate the smallest flower and look at the world as if you've never seen it before every day. Wow. That's really beautiful. <laughs> and, and I don't have a problem with getting philosophical. It's, it's really okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's, that's you know, that's philosophical enough because it's really, it's what the, the Wuli masters uh, had that practice of seeing everything as you see it for the first time, right? Exactly. And in my practice with uh, uh, gratitude and nature connection work, uh, I've been trained in, uh, in a lineage, in the Apache lineage of tracking animals. Wow. It's really important in that lineage never to end up in a rut, you know, never to get comfortable in a habit. And so when you're in nature and you see a bird, you see a blackbird, you don't just see a blackbird, you see a specific blackbird. You see that blackbird in that moment under those conditions. So you've never seen that before. So always stay aware, always stay observant and always be grateful for what comes to you. Wow, this is amazing. This actually reminds me of um, the spiritual experience that I had that also motivated me to do this podcast. Mm. Um, at one point, um, I, it's like I've been given this gift of feeling after being really depressed and really low in my mm. life. Um, I felt like everything was new, like, some, some uh, a beautiful feeling came. Um, uh, it was really, really uh, like my hair was, <laughs> it, it was very profound. And um, after that, for, I don't know for how much time, but everything was new for me. And I enjoying every single thing like it was new. It was such an amazing feeling. It's like, it was like, the first time I've been in the city that I that I live in, the first time I uh, went to the apartment that I was living in, everything was new. Everything was full of life. It was, mm. wow, it was amazing. So don't you think that's partly what gratitude offers us? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Huh? This, is, this is what I also feel, that uh, I got to be grateful again about the things that I took for granted. Mm-hmm. I got used with them and okay, it's not such a big deal that I'm living where I'm living, that I'm, it's not much. But mm. that feeling made me see the the usual things really, really differently. Like they were new and that, that was amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. So, and so, it's still yeah. alive in, in my soul, in my heart. It's really beautiful. Yeah. So it makes sense then you know, when we think of how, how in, in whatever religion you have, right, gratitude is really central because it's tied, closely tied to spirituality uh, and to uh, acknowledging and witnessing creation, right? Exactly. And our place in it. Exactly. Mm. This is, this is uh, another reason that I love um, this work on gratitude because it's universal, like you said, you don't have to be a certain religion to to choose to be grateful and to realize that beyond the the pragmatical things that gratitude can bring you, um, it's actually a spiritual experience to to choose to see life through gratitude. Mm. And it's something that uh, I've uh, seen in different religions. Like that's amazing. And you know, I I, I know depression as well myself, and I think what our society, our mainstream culture in many ways does, it numbs us, right? It numbs us to uh, all the relationships we have, right? Uh, partly because there's so much damage being done to all the things we love by the culture we're in. And it's hard to hold that in our hearts, you know, to feel the sadness of seeing a forest raised or uh, a mountain chewed up by machines or people we love who move away all the time, it hurts uh, too much, right? And so depression, of course, can be many different things, but in one sense, I believe it's an expression of that grief and, and hopelessness that comes with that. And so gratitude, when we touch gratitude again, you know, we're beginning to touch all those relationships and bring them into our life again. And with that comes responsibility, right? Comes yeah. responsibility to look after all those things that we're grateful for, you know, because they are relationships, they're family then. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so um, what I'm also curious about, um, 
do you have something that you do consistently that makes you grateful and uh, a habit that you do every day or every uh, week that may that helps you be in an attitude of gratitude well every day every morning as soon as i wake up i go into the woods uh, with my boys often and we have this little morning ritual of saying hi to the whole world so oh. and it's it's the Haudenosaunee greeting it's a thanksgiving address which is a way of acknowledging all of creation but you you know whatever way it comes out but uh, it's it's speaking to the people in your life it's to the waters to the earth to the plants to the animals that run across the earth to the trees to the fruits and nuts from the trees for the rains and the winds for the the you know the thunder and the moon and the sun and the stars and the people have gone before us and people have come after us and for whatever the creative power is that makes this happen again and again every day uh, so i do that with my boys and then at dinner before eating we also share our gratitude with each other um about the food or about each other uh... whatever comes up sometimes we get one word each sometimes uh we uh, you know yeah whatever comes up and sometimes somebody says i don't want to share anything but the thing is i've never my my wife cecilia and i we've never taught our boys to say thank you you know if someone gives them a gift or whatever uh we tell them and in, in society people expect you to say thank you and it might be good sometimes uh, but we talk them thankfulness you know? and and this is how we teach them thankfulness is by the morning ritual and the dinner ritual of of sharing gratitude that's perfect <laughs> i actually wrote an article on this on the fact that i uh, i myself have been taught to say thank you mm. and uh, that we as a society have been uh, are in the habit of saying thank you but not actually feeling the thankfulness the gratitude mm. and um, i also believe that it's more important to teach uh, the children to feel the gratitude and they can show it in different ways that you don't actually have to say thank you and if they actually say it it's from their heart and it's you can feel the difference and mm -hmm. i i strongly i strongly believe this that um uh, it's amazing to 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 teach the children this rather than just saying thank you and i also have an exercise for our audience right now if they didn't read the article uh, when you say thank you try to feel the gratitude like even if it's something very simple be conscious in that moment and think about the fact that you are really grateful for the person that's helping you or for the thing that uh, he or she has done for you it's really powerful i have myself done this and it's it's really nice to be conscious when you say thank you and really feel that gratitude it shifts your perception and your your um your emotions regarding the situation itself so Beautiful. It yeah lovely lovely all right so um do you want to mention a few people in your life that you are grateful for uh Mickey uh, yeah i'm i'm grateful for my wife cecilia I'm grateful for my boys Corbin and Quentin uh and for you know so for my parents my mother my father who made this life possible and gosh for uh, for my mentors and teachers uh, John Young was instrumental in introducing me to gratitude Jake Swamp who brought it to John and his community um so yeah the whole lineage of indigenous peoples who have uh held this this tradition this practice alive because they've held a relationship to all of creation alive in ways that um a lot of us have forgotten in mainstream culture so i'm i'm, I'm really grateful for them for bringing it back to us yeah that's awesome i also believe that uh the relationship they have with nature it's it's natural like uh, we have like you said we have a disconnect 
with uh, our way of being and doing things. We, for many of us, going to nature is something of a luxury more than something that it's natural for us and it's necessary for us to reconnect with nature and to breathe fresh air, to listen to the birds singing, to uh, enjoy nature itself. And, yeah. I, I also believe that they, the relationship they have, it's much more deep and much more conscious than our relationship with the world and with nature. And I really think also that we, sh we can learn from this. Mm. Yeah. All right. So um, where can people find you, Mickey? Where can people see your work? Uh, Naturaldads.com. Yeah. That's All my right. website. That's where I, I do regular blogs. Mm -hmm. uh, I might do one on gratitude after this. Oh, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, I would be glad that if you would uh, do it, I will gladly share it. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm really happy that uh, we had this this talk. And uh, thank you so much for accepting my invitation and for uh, for the amazing things that you shared with us. The gratitude is mutual, Georgian. Thank you. Thank you.